Do you want to be part of a redemptive, restorative move of God on the earth? A nation changing, atmosphere shifting move of God. If so, keep watching because I think you're going to enjoy our our time together um, here in this service. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pastor Darren, lead pastor at Seattle Revival Center. This is our third week of hosting our services online. Uh, Our campus has been closed now for three weeks because of the coronavirus outbreak and uh, and we're kind of just going after it online. Now, I know this is a bit different. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, three days before we found out that um, that we couldn't host gatherings anymore in the greater Seattle area, um, uh, uh, we, we, we received the information and we sat down, we said, okay, what are we gonna do? Um, what is our online service gonna look like? And we realized that, you know, tens of thousands of churches were gonna be hosting incredible services online on Facebook on YouTube and that they were going to be everywhere and um, and I was thinking you know I don't necessarily want to sit down on the couch with my kids and watch like just another church service you know a 90 minute sort like I want to be at church I want to be in the building okay I want to be with my friends and my family I want to be worshiping the Lord and in, in, in the room but if that is impossible we're gonna make this thing as fun and engaging and entertaining uh, and educational as possible. And of course, we're gonna just pray and go go after worship and try to create a portal, try to create a place where people can have an encounter with Jesus. With Jesus. So that's what we have been going after. That's what we've been attempting to do uh, for, for, the last, for the last three weeks. Um, but really, what we've been studying as a church this year in 2020 has been preparing for outpouring. And so even though uh, we're quarantined, we're at home, we're watching from home, we're being told we can't, can't leave and all of this stuff, that, um, that at Seattle Bible Center, our mission hasn't, hasn't changed. Our mission is still to see people awakened to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. And our expectation is that this whole thing, it hasn't, this thing hasn't caught God off guard, okay? That when, when this whole thing is said and done, we're gonna find ourselves on one of the biggest waves we've ever uh, been, been a part of that. We're gonna find so much momentum within the church. So many people are gonna be gathering and wanting to meet Jesus that that really, that, that this moment right now where we're all at home, that it is, it is imperative that we continue to prepare for outpouring. So that's what this is all about right now. Like this is a part of our series, Preparing for Outpouring. And today we're gonna be talking about something um, that's very, very important. We're going to be talking about an ingredient, a discipline, um, something that should be a part of our our wineskin, something that should be a part of our our structure. So if you got your Bibles, I want you to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. What's interesting about Acts 2, 42, of course, um, this is a, uh, we're reading about like one of the, like this is an incredible moment of revival, outpouring, and harvest. Okay, Acts 2, verse 42. 41 one verse prior we read the record that 3,000 people were added to the church okay one verse prior to where we're about to read we see that a church the the early church goes from 120 people to 3,000 in a day one verse later acts 2 verse 42 it tells us what they do and this is this is absolutely fascinating here you have revival you have harvest you have massive church growth you have the power of god like this is this is unprecedented okay and what they do is they gather acts 2 42 they gather together and they devote themselves it says and they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching fellowship breaking of bread and prayers what's so fascinating about that is that um that that i would think that if i was in this moment of of holy ghost pandemonium where there are now three thousand people that have been you think there'd be so much energy and so much focus and in this whole idea of now it's all about three things mission 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 let's go into operations mode but that's not what they do here what they do is they they actually they gather in, in one sense it looks like they actually slow themselves down a little bit and and, and and this moment is captured it's scribed it's written down and it says and they devoted themselves 
So this is what we're gonna be talking about today. If you wanna be a part of a redemptive, restorative uh, move of God, something that can be sustained, of course, you're gonna to have to have some structure, you're gonna to have to have some disciplines, you're gonna to have to have some values, and that these things are critical in, in stewarding and sustaining a move of God. But here, we actually see an incredible key that most people just, they read through this super quick. They just get through it and they don't, they don't actually see what this is. This is actually an apostolic key. It's an apostolic strategy for sustaining a move of God. It says they, they came together and they devoted themselves. And the word devote is the word that we're really going to open and unpack and begin to massage within our hearts. You say, well, why? Why would we do that with this word devoted? Because it means committed. You see, here within the context of wild, crazy, charismatic revival, harvest, glory, they, they slow down and they recommit themselves to the apostolic mission. But it's not necessarily even unto the mission itself, but it's, it's actually something a, a greater than that. Check it out. There are four things that they commit themselves to. Number one, Bible reading. Nope, that's not what it says. It says, to the apostles' teaching. The first thing that they committed themselves to was to gather and to submit themselves in, in a corporate context to teaching, revelatory teaching coming from the apostles. Isn't that interesting? It's not just that they didn't, they didn't, they didn't dedicate themselves to private solo Bible study. They devoted themselves to corporate um, study to the apostolic teaching. Number two, to fellowship. Again, this is what this is so radical because uh, 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 with this with this movement, okay, you would think that they would be focusing on mission. Instead, they're focusing on friendship as a fundamental pillar of this apostolic move of God. Yeah, friendship. Isn't that crazy? It says they devoted themselves, they committed themselves, they covenanted together to fellowship. <laughs> it's amazing. The third thing is they gave themselves to the breaking of bread, to eating together. And this isn't just eating together, this is coming together, fellowshipping, but with a purpose. It's it, that it, it, that when it says that he broke bed, bread, this this India, this is a celebrating of the love and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ at the table of communion. This is incredible. And then the last thing, the fourth thing, is corporate prayer. They committed themselves to this place of prayer. Now, this is awesome that we actually get to study this today. Why? Because we're quarantined, right? We're, we have to stay at home. We're not allowed to leave the house unless it's just to, to get something that we need to survive, right? Um, and yet, there are four challenges. In this place of, of isolation, how can we still give ourselves to apostolic teaching, fellowship and friendship, uh, communion and prayer? I never thought I would ever be having this conversation, this place of asking the question and encouraging people to think this through of, uh, think this through of in isolation, how do we devote ourselves to these four things? I never thought I, ever, I would ever say that. And yet, for the first time in human history, this is possible. I want you to think about that for a second, that we are all staying at home, and yet we can still submit ourselves to apostolic teaching, we can still um, we can still connect for fellowship and friendship. We can still engage in this place of communing together unto the purpose of honoring the love and life of, and Savior of our Lord Jesus Christ in this place of communion and corporate prayer all through technology. That is absolutely incredible. And yet, as amazing as that is, that's really not what we're talking about. Today, we're really not talking about teaching, fellowship, communion, prayer. We're talking about an ingredient that is essential in sustaining anything worth sustaining, whether it's your marriage, your business, a revival, that we must learn what it means to be a people that are devoted 
to be a people that are committed. When we get a breakthrough, we don't just go mission, mission, mission. When we get a, a radical breakthrough, we slow ourselves down and we reapply ourselves to our commitments. We reevaluate our commitments that when there's incredible momentum that we don't get shallow, but we, we slow, slow, slow down in order to get deep because sustainability matters to us. Yeah, so in this place, we're talking about what it means to be devoted. We're talking about what it means to be faithful, what it means to be committed, what it means to not be double-minded, what it means to, to reevaluate that anywhere we, we have said, I do, that we will follow through. Bob Jones was here back in uh, 2012, I believe it was, at Seattle Bible Center, and he was doing a, little, a small little intimate session, and he said to some of the people there, he said, some of you are tumbleweeds. And I remember thinking, a tumbleweed? And he goes, how do you know that you're a tumbleweed? He said, because when the wind blows, it blows you all over the earth. And then he said, we are not to be tumbleweeds, we are to be trees. And then he said, um, uh, uh, some of you don't have any fruits. If you wanna know why you don't have any fruits, is because you don't have any roots. And his encouragement was to make a commitment to follow through with your commitments. And anywhere you say, have said, I do, that you, would have, that you would have the character to follow through. It reminds me of Ephesians 6.10, where Paul is writing and he says, finally be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you'd be able to stand against the schemes of, of the devil. And I think that this is, you know, I've, I've been getting, uh, I've had phone calls and various meetings where pastoring people that are, where, where the, like the wind is just blowing right now, right? The wind is just blowing. And the, and the question is, Pastor Darren, what do I do? And my encouragement is stand. Stand in the strength of his might. Right, like, and, and as the wind blows, the wind will blow things, the things will go flying, but this is what I know. You will remain. Why? Because you are in Him. And if you're watching this and you're like, I'm not in Him, I, I don't even know really what, what you're talking about in commitment, I am definitely not committed. I am not loyal, I've got a lot of issues. And, and if you're watching this, awesome. I'm, I'm glad that you're watching this. This is not me saying that you need to man up and start measuring up, that it's time for you to, to become a, a better self-functional savior. Listen, I'm not interested in you becoming far more committed. I am, I am interested in leading you to the one who has made a radical commitment to you 2,000 years ago. You know that a Christian isn't a Christian because someone is amazing and and um, and is like some sort of self savior human superman. Like no 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 no, a Christian is just one who at a certain point in their life came to the end of themselves and realized they didn't make for a very good self god. <laughs> a Christian is just one that finally came to the end of themselves and realized that they needed a savior. And at a point of desperation, at a point of great humility, they cried out to the Lord. And they said, hey, I, I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And it's just that easy, it's just that simple. A Christian isn't a superman or a superwoman, He's not a, she's not a perfect person. A Christian is a Christ person. It's one who has reached out and grabbed a hold of the most amazing, the most selfless commitment ever made 2,000 years ago on that incredible cross of Calvary. And if you've never done that, you, get, you should do it. I mean, like, it's not something that you just, you, I'm not telling you to try, I'm not, I'm just, it's, it's, this, it's this place where there is a, there is a grace to reveal truth that can pull you into unprecedented strength and courage that can only be found in Christ. And if you need that, 
you can find that in the person of Jesus. Let's do this. I want to pray. And then uh, when I'm done, uh, I would invite you to stick around because we're going to go back into a time of, of worship. But um, as we're praying, I just want you to invite the Holy Spirit to come to hover over your commitments or the lack thereof. You see, some of, our ask, uh, some of us are at where we're at right now because of the commitments that we've made. And it's great. We're in a very healthy place. And yet some of us are not in a very good place right now um, because we haven't had a lot of character in our commitments and we haven't really followed through in our place of commitment. And either way, it's okay because there is grace for and which basically means that transformation is available if you're willing to just humble yourself and to be real and to, and to hear Holy Spirit and what He has to say. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy and for your kindness. And we thank you that we can stand in the power of your might and that in this time, we can stand firm. And I pray, Lord, for incredible strength for each and every person that is watching right now. Father, I pray for incredible resolve in all of the different areas where we have said, I do, and in all these different areas where we have made commitments, Father, I pray for a fortification, for a steadfastness, and for a perseverance for people that are watching right now, for those who have never met you, that have never had an encounter with you. Jesus, I pray that right now, you'd reveal yourself. You'd reveal your love, and you'd reveal your passionate heart for each and every person watching. Lord, I pray that you'd come, that you'd come right now, that you would invade our privacy, and that you would introduce us to our Father. Lord, I thank you that in this time you are awakening people to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ, and I thank you that that is your mission for Seattle Revival Center, is that we would awaken people to their identity and destiny in Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that we are preparing for outpouring. We are preparing for power. and We are preparing for growth. And I thank you that this current season, Lord, that you are going to use this current season. And Lord, I thank you that when people look at our lives, that they will say that there is a people that... That, that were devoted, they were committed, they were faithful, they were loyal, they always followed through. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that we get to look just like you because of you. All for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen and amen and amen.